Amen. 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 <coughs> uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 10. And uh, I'm going to ask if uh, little Joe, would you give me a water, okay? Give me a water, son. If they're not in the, yeah, they are in the fridge. Uh, but give me a water. Luke 10, 38 through 42. I'm kind of battling what everybody's battling this time of year. Just a, a, a raw throat, I guess, sore, not even sore, just just coughing, you know, just coughing up. Dry and, and, yeah, so but this one ain't dry. <laughs> I got flip coming up. <laughs> But I can still preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd rather have this than the flu. Amen. 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 I'd rather have this than, than a whole lot of other things that people got going on. So, tell you, we're a blessed people. Amen. We are a blessed people. Even when we're sick, uh, there's some people that are sicker than us. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's some people we're hurting. There's some people that are hurting without Jesus in their hearts. Amen. Amen. And that's the, that's the worst kind of hurt you can have because there's no one to console you. There's nothing to give you comfort, strength, and joy. But oh, I, I just I love the Lord and I'm thankful that uh, even when I'm hurting, He's right there. Amen. Luke 10, when you're there, say amen. 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 <coughs> amen. Luke 10, 38. We're going to read through 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 40. <coughs> but Martha was cumbered. Not cucumbered. She was cumbered. What does that mean? Distracted. Say distracted. 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 With much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me alone to serve alone or has left me to serve alone? Bid her. You tell her, therefore, that she helped me. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and he said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. There's only one thing you need, Martha. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And with the help of the Holy Spirit tonight, I'd like to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of distraction. <coughs> distraction. Amen. Help me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. This has come to you asking for your anointing, your spirit. I ask you, Lord, that you would anoint this vessel, uh, anoint my, my throat tonight, God, that it can be able to speak your word without too much coughing. Lord, I ask you that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. We pray against the vices of the enemy that would try to come and distract us. We try to disrupt your word, your spirit. Bind it all in Jesus' name. Say the blood of Jesus is against you. Lord, we plead the blood over the outside of this house, the inside of this house. Lord, that you would have your way. We love you. We are here to hear from you. Speak, oh God. Speak through your servant unto your people. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise. Hide me behind the cross tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Distraction. Distraction. How many of you have ever been distracted before? Amen. Nathan's like, I'm always distracted. Anytime that TV is on, my oldest good boy son always gets distracted. And uh, I've seen Caden walk right into a wall before because he was distracted while he was watching Spider-Man on the phone. I've seen Nathan lose his ability to eat if the TV's on. Ain't that right, son? <laughs> Me, myself, I like to eat while I'm, especially cereal, I don't like eating at the table. I like sitting in my, my sofa that reclines and Miranda says I need a bib because I'm eating my cereal and I'm watching Sports Center or something and I got you know, hundred bunches of oats dripping down my shirt because uh, I get 
distracted. We all get distracted from time to time. And uh, <clears throat> I was looking, and I, I should have got it for you guys so we could pull it up on the TV. But it's a true story. This guy was walking, and he was just staring at his cell phone. He didn't know that a grizzly bear had gotten loose from the zoo. And this grizzly bear was making his way down the sidewalk. Anybody else see that video? Y'all to look it up. This <laughs> grizzly bear just walking down the sidewalk. And then this guy's walking towards the grizzly bear, staring at his phone. And suddenly he realizes what is in front of him, and he just takes off. And it's really, really funny. And uh, y'all just need to look that up. But in our text, we, we read about two sisters. I often refer to them as the two M's. You know, we got the three M's here at New Hope. We got Mary, Marlene, and Melrose. And, uh, but in our text, we had Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha had a brother that was a very, very close friend to Jesus. And his name was his name was Lazarus. And uh, one day, Jesus and his disciples were hanging out at Mary and Martha and Lazarus's house. And everybody was just having a great time. They were visiting with one another, shooting the breeze, catching up. And uh, Mary was in the living room talking with Jesus and the disciples. And Martha was preparing things in the kitchen. Martha was setting the table. She's making the tea. She's preparing to serve all her guests in her house. But in the midst of Martha's busyness, she began to stress out. How many of you ladies, you better start stressing out when you're making dinner and preparing things. And yeah, it's, it's easy, easy to do. And uh, we all get stressed out sometimes whenever we just, we're trying to do things. We've got a schedule. And, and uh, well, she got distracted and uh, she wasn't able to focus on Jesus like she should have. And suddenly Martha, she, she just lost it. She lost her composure. She lost her smile and her sweetness and her willingness to serve. And she goes into the living room and she says, Jesus, can you please tell my sister Mary to get in this kitchen with me and to help prepare me or to help me prepare this meal that I'm about to serve you guys? And you would think that Jesus would say, Mary, you need to go in there and help your sister. But that's not what Jesus did at all. Jesus looked at Martha and he said, Martha, there's a whole lot of things that you're cumbered about. There's a whole lot of things that you're worried about. You're stressed about. You're distracted with. Martha, you're distracted. You're worried. You're stressed about getting this meal prepared. You're stressing about being a good hostess. You're worried about making sure the plates are set properly on the table. The, the napkins are there. The silverware is there. The cups are there. The cups got ice. You're, you're worried about how everything looks. And, and all of that has a time and a place. But Jesus was saying, Martha, in the midst of all of your busyness, you've gotten so distracted that you're not even focusing on who's in your house. Can you say it? Amen. Brothers and sisters, saints, Christians, if we are not careful, all of us can become distracted just like Martha was from time to time. What happens whenever you're distracted? You begin to lose focus. You don't think straight. You don't talk straight. And whenever we become spiritually distracted, we can easily find ourselves missing out on the very things that God is trying to say to us. Can you say amen? amen? So I just want to talk about distraction for a little bit tonight. Number one, Martha became distracted by things that weren't that important. Amen. Martha became distracted by things that really weren't all that important. Martha was a wonderful woman of God. Martha was the type of woman that whenever she saw a need... She made sure that need got done. Martha didn't sit around and wait for everybody else to fix the problem. Martha saw that need and she said, I can fix it and that's what I'm going to do. The table isn't going to set itself. The meal isn't going to prepare itself. So Martha got into that kitchen and she began to prepare for her guests. But in the process of all of her busyness, 
this and, and doing this and doing that, Martha became distracted by something that really was not all that important. While Jesus <coughs> and the disciples and Mary were all in the living room, <coughs> spending time with one another, Martha was slaving away in that kitchen. The food had to be just right for Martha. The table had to be just perfect. The decorations had to be just right. But think about it. While Martha is busy and distracted, decorating everything just right, she's missing out on time spent with Jesus. We've all been guilty of being distracted before. We've all been distracted by things that really weren't that important. We get distracted by social media. We get distracted with TV. We get distracted with hobbies. And how I many know there's nothing wrong with any of those things? But uh, if we're honest with ourselves, many times those very things have a way of distracting us the most. Uh, let me give you an example. Whenever I wake up in the morning, my phone is my alarm clock. And I usually set it between 4 and 5 every morning to get up and to study and to pray and to seek the Lord. But then sometimes I'll hit snooze, you know, that flesh is fighting. And, and I wake up about 4.30, 4.45. But uh, on my victorious days, I'm getting up at 4 o'clock and, and I look at my phone and sure enough, what is there? It's my Facebook app and it says, you have six or seven notifications. Amen. How do you know what I'm talking about? You know, you got those notifications and then you're thinking, oh, I wonder who wrote me. Hmm? Oh, did did somebody comment on something that I had, maybe a picture I did? Did somebody ask me a question? I mean, who is it that is, has something they wanted to say to me? And if I'm not careful, you know what happens? I, I'm just going to check real quick. It'll all take a minute. You check, and you're like, oh, that's brother so-and-so. Oh, that's a funny joke he shared. He tagged me in it. Oh, that's a nice picture. You like it. And then all of a sudden, somebody shows you this crazy video about a cat on a skateboard. <laughs> And then you're just like watching this cat on a skateboard. And next thing you know, I've been watching a cat on a skateboard for 20 minutes. The time that I was supposed to be spending seeking the Lord in the morning, I spent watching a cat on a skateboard. Talk about distraction. Amen. That's just the way it was for Martha. Amen. She wasn't distracted by a cat on a skateboard, but she was distracted by carrots on a stove. Amen. She was distracted by a turkey in the oven. Amen. There's all kinds of different things that are pulling at us and trying to steal our attention and trying to steal our time and our mind. But we got to take this lesson from Martha tonight. Don't let things that are not that important distract you in your walk with God. Amen. God's will for every one of us in here is to know Him, to experience Him, to walk with Him, to live a life of blessing and fulfillment. But if we're not careful, we can get so distracted by little things, so distracted by things that really have no eternal value, no purpose whatsoever, and it steals away that time that God wants to talk to us. I'm talking about distraction tonight. Beware, church, of the things that Satan wants to use. Beware of his tools. Beware of his vices. He's trying to distract you so that you can hear what God is trying to say. Amen. Distraction. Distraction. What is it that is distracting you? Because all of us have something Come on, all of us have a little case of ADD, I guess you say. <laughs> something that distracts us, something that keeps us from being able to focus on Jesus like we ought to. When's the last time you really just sat at the feet of Jesus and you weren't inside of a church house? Think about it. Amen. When's the last time we sat at the feet of Jesus and we weren't inside of New Hope Church? Man, you know why sometimes it's, oh wow, that's a tough pill to swallow? It's because many times we are distracted by things that just really aren't that 
important. Amen. Well, I gotta go to the shooting range. I gotta clean my gun. I, I, I gotta pick up the trash. I gotta change the dishwasher out. I, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. The Lakers are on at 730. This is going on. I gotta run and get the groceries. I gotta do this. And some things we need to do, right? We gotta pay bills. We gotta work. We gotta be responsible adults and husbands, wives, and, and fathers to children, mothers to children. But at the same time, we make room for everything else but we get distracted from what we ought to be doing the most. Can you say amen? Distraction. There's a danger to distraction. Last week, I was uh, working, it was on, or two weeks ago, I guess you say now, uh, it was on a Friday and I'm over working by my house and and I, I'm i sitting in my truck at a, at a red light and uh, all of a sudden, this truck behind me just hits the gas and bumps into me. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, I know what happened. He probably thought that the light turned green and he hit his gas and just ran right into me. So anyway, so I pull off the side of the road and I mean, I'm not mad. I'm just like, it's kind of annoying. I don't like time wasted on stupid stuff like that. So anyway, so the guy, he's in a company truck and I'm like, oh man, he's going to be in trouble. So uh, we're talking together and, and he goes, sorry, man, my foot just slipped off the gas. And I'm thinking, yeah, you don't accelerate, you know, slip off the brake and on the accelerator. And I said, okay, I, I, I hear you. And, and I said, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, I'm okay. He goes, are you good? I said, yeah, I'm good. I said, I got, I got things to do. And he goes, yeah, me too. And so we kind of shook hands, just went our separate ways. And sure enough, a couple days later, I saw that same bumper that had a little ding in it and he lives on my street. <laughs> but uh, you know what it was? He was distracted, and because he was distracted, he put himself in a dangerous situation. There's a lot of people that have died because they've been texting on phones, swerving off, drifting off into somebody else's lane. Why? Because they were distracted. Amen. I wonder a lot of times if God is saying to us, you need to stay on that straight and narrow way. But here we are. We're getting distracted. We're drifting over to the oncoming traffic. We're drifting over to where the devil is. We're drifting over to the world. God says it's time to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Don't be distracted by this world. Don't be distracted by the world's entertainment. Don't be distracted by the world's thinking but keep your mind and your eyes focused on Jesus Christ so that you can see him and hear him when he speaks. Can you say amen? amen. Number two, Martha became distracted by others. Amen. Martha became distracted by others. As Martha was preparing dinner, she began to focus on her sister's inactivity. And I don't know why. Anytime I think of Martha and Mary, I kind of think of Melrose and Mary. <laughs> but Martha, she thought to herself, I'm in this kitchen all by myself. I'm slaving away in here. Here I am working. I've been peeling these potatoes. I'm tired. Look at my sister in there. She's laughing, cutting up, telling jokes, and just having a good time, spending time with the Lord. Here I am, working away. My sister's in there, just talking away. You know what happens whenever we get distracted by others? We get upset, and we start lashing out against them. Amen. Start lashing out against them. Luke 10 and 40. <coughs> But Martha was cumbered. What's that mean? Distracted. Look it up in your Strong's Concordance when you get home. And you'll see cumbered means distracted. But Martha was cumbered or distracted with much serving. She was so busy serving everybody else. She got distracted. Beware teachers. Beware Pastor William. That you don't get so distracted preparing messages. Preparing this, doing this ministry, doing that ministry, that you get distracted. You don't even have time to hear from him anymore. Amen. Amen. So remember that. But Martha was covered about with my service. She was distracted. And she came to Jesus and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? I'm in here all alone, Jesus. She's with you. I'm in here. I'm, I'm productive. I'm busy. And she's not. Tell her to come in here and help me. Amen. 
Because Martha was distracted by her sister's inactivity, she began to point out what she thought were Mary's flaws. And that's what happens whenever we get distracted by other people. We begin nitpicking at people and pointing out their flaws. We start tearing down our brothers and our sisters. We start tearing down those in whom we love. And once that happens, feelings get hurt and relationships become fractured. All because we got distracted in the midst of our serving. Bad things happen whenever we get distracted. As I mentioned earlier, before I started pastoring, I was only preaching about once every other month. I was teaching the adult Sunday school class, which was, you know, which was great, but I'm thinking, man, I got a word in me. I need to preach this word. Like Jeremiah, he said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. And uh, so here I am, I'm preaching once every other month. And my dad had this calendar, which he would put the different ministers that are speaking. And at that time, he had about six or seven ministers in his church. So he's trying to get them all time and different things. And, and I look at that calendar, you know, the beginning of the month, and it'd say, you know, Derek... Aaron, Jordan, and Jeff, you know, different preachers in the church. And I'm thinking, where am I at? Huh? Where am I at? I'm doing adult Sunday school. I'm teaching this. I'm, 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 I'm taking the kids out on Sunday. So I'm not only teaching kids, not only teaching the adults, but I'm taking kids out to junior church on Sunday. I'm playing the bass. I'm busy. I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And yet my dad don't want to have me preaching. You know what happened? I got distracted. Oh, yeah. I begin to think, well, Dad don't appreciate me. Maybe this church will. Amen? Amen. Well, if Dad's not going to use me. Maybe I can be used over here. You know what it was? I got distracted. I didn't recognize the fact that, man, Dad already had me doing all kinds of different things. But I was distracted. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to be doing this. You see, it's real easy for all of us to become so distracted with other people that we begin to put ourselves in compromising positions. Beware of the dangers of distraction. Don't let other people distract you in your walk with the Lord. I mean, no, not everybody's going to be happy. You decide to walk with Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, don't be shocked when this world hates you. Amen. You know why it's going to hate you? Because it hated him first. It hated what Christ stood for. They didn't hate Jesus because he, of what he wore or what he looked like. They hated him for who, what he stood for. That's what many people hate Christians, hate the church, hate our way of thinking. They hate what we stand for. We stand for the word of God. We stand for holiness. We stand for godliness and righteousness. But that's why the world hates us because we are not of this world. We're of a different kingdom. Can you say amen? But if you're not careful, you can get distracted. I've seen many people over the years that they start out walking with the Lord but then all of a sudden they get distracted by their friends. They get distracted by this person or that person. You know what that distraction does is it pulls them off of the track. Remember one time we were doing an outdoor service and uh, we were just singing songs before and the Spirit of God was moving. All of a sudden this man come up just tears in his eyes. He just weeping out there, sitting on the back row. And uh, just tears in his eyes, crying, lifting up his hands. I mean, God was moving on his life. And then all of a sudden, this young girl comes up to him. She puts her arm around his shoulder and she says, You don't have to cry. You don't have to cry. It's okay. You don't need this church right here. Come home. How many of you remember that? It was sad. Just come home. Just come on. Come on. And he said, no, I'm staying here. Just, just leave. Just leave. And she left upset. Then the whole time I'm preaching, his phone's ringing. He answered the phone. I leave me alone. Leave me alone. Then his phone rings again. And then you know what happened? He got up 
and he left. You know why? The distraction was too great. Don't be so distracted that the world pulls you away from where you ought to be. Because dangerous things happen whenever we get distracted. Amen. Number three, we've talked a lot about distraction time. How do we keep ourselves from getting distracted? How do we keep ourselves from getting distracted? That's right. Amen. You read my notes? <laughs> what we do is we stay at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Whenever you see Mary in the scriptures, she's always at the feet of Jesus. That's an awesome little fact about her. Always at the feet of Jesus. Although it seemed as if Mary wasn't doing anything, Mary was doing all she needed to do. Staying at the feet of Jesus. Amen. So all the time we get so distracted. Lord, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. God says, all you need to do is sit at my feet. You sit at my feet and I'm going to give you everything that you have need of. Amen. Amen. Oh, although Mary, excuse me, although Martha was busy, y'all distracted me. Although Martha was busy, she wasn't blessed. Amen. We can be busy. That doesn't mean we're going to be blessed. Amen. I'm busy doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Doesn't mean you're going to be blessed. Got to take time to sit at Jesus' feet. Although Martha was busy, she was growing bitter. Amen. Why? Because she was distracted. Rather than sitting at Jesus' feet, she was distracted by everything else. Cumbered about with many things. Distracted with many things. Distracted about the table. Distracted about the clean floor. Distracted about this and that. And Jesus said, your sister though has done what she, the best thing to do is. Imagine how that made Martha feel. <laughs> She's getting on to her sister. And Jesus said, leave your sister alone. She's in the right. You're in the wrong. Rather than Martha sitting at Jesus' feet, she was distracted by everything else. Amen. I believe one reason we stress so much is because we become so distracted that we forget to sit at His feet. Amen. The peace that you have need of in your mind is found at the feet of Jesus. The joy that you have need of in your in your heart, once again, your soul, once again, is found at the feet of Jesus. It's not found, well, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to start this. I'm going to start that. We can get so busy, but continue to get bitter. Amen. I think it was John Wood of the old UCLA basketball coach many years ago. He said, don't mistake activity for achievement. Amen. Well, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Don't matter if you're not having time to sit at Jesus' feet. Amen. So what's the lesson here tonight? Don't get distracted. Stay at the feet of Jesus. Learn from him. Hear from him. He longs to touch you with his presence. You love the Lord tonight. I'm going to ask you, Brother Charlie and Sister Miranda, would you guys come to the... And Sister Michaela, you guys come to the instruments tonight. Mary, would you pray for the people tonight? Can you just pray? Hallelujah. <coughs> Now let's just pray tonight. Lord, help me to stay focused on you, not, not distracted by the other things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He of G. He of G.
But brother, just realize it's, it's not worth getting distracted. Amen. Because some things, they don't matter. They're not that important. Amen. But we get so, man, consumed with it. Amen. I hope this message helped you. Maybe I ought to preach to myself tonight. Amen. Because I, I, I get very distracted with things that it's not all about that. It's not about that. What's it about? It's about the kingdom of God. Amen. It's about souls. It's about preaching the unerring gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then, but sometimes we get, and we're focused on this and that. And God says, hey, sit down for a minute. Sit at my feet. Hear from me. Amen. Amen. Don't mistake busyness for being blessed. Amen. Amen. You love the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. I pray that the Lord just bless you and spoke to your heart tonight. And whenever we leave, let's, just, let's not get distracted. But let's stay focused on Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good job once again, Michaela. Doing good, baby girl. I took Michaela by the hand the other night. I said, Michaela, the Bible says that uh, ask and you'll receive. Knock and it'll be open. I took her hands. I said, Michaela, God's going to teach you how to play that piano. Yeah. I said, I took her hands. I said, you believe this, Michaela? She said, yeah, I believe it. That's okay. In Jesus' name, teach these hands how to play. David said, teach my hands how to war. Mm -hmm. Amen. And a lot of times we war through instruments. We war down the powers of darkness. We battle in the yeah. principality, yeah. spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what God's doing. He's teaching those hands how to war. Amen. So you keep praying for Michaela. You're doing good, baby. Amen. Don't you just get a puffed up head, though. Amen. Amen. What? Oh my goodness. Oh my. You hear her. Next Sunday, are you going to teach about me? Are you going to, are you going to use? She's basically saying, are you going to use me in a sermon illustration? Because I want to be used in one too. <laughs> Problem is, is you're perfect. You don't have any problems. And your brothers do. <laughs> I can't tell you Amen. Okay. All right. What? All right. I'll use you in a sermon illustration. Women be silent in the church. Amen. <laughs> Where's Randy when you need to say amen? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we just love you. God, it's, it's been a joy being in your presence once again. Be with your people. I pray that you give us all traveling mercies as we go our separate ways. Keep us from distracted drivers, bad drivers, drunk drivers, high drivers, texters, distracted drivers. Keep us from them. And Father, we ask you that, that you would keep us that we would be cognizant of the fact of not becoming distracted our own selves. Looking down at the phone when we're driving down the road. Looking at the phone when we should be studying your word. Being consumed with things that aren't all that important when we could be spending time with you. Father, I pray that our minds would be stayed and focused on you. Let us not be distracted by many things, but focused on you. Because everything we need it's in you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. And continue to touch those that are sick in body. Continue to just touch them. Continue to touch Sister Underwood. And uh, Ray and Jean. Adrienne. And Randy. All those, God, that are affiliated with this church or associated with it. Just keep touching them, Lord. We pray for Bishop Lake. He just touch his back. Continue to strengthen him. Continue to touch my mom, Lord. She, she's been not feeling good this past week. Just touch her. Lord, we just love you and we praise you. I thank you for this church. It's a wonderful church. Good people. Thank you for them. Bless them. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Love you. Okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> get, get, grab you another one.